This is a story about the future of banking and the potential increase in government surveillance and control of your money. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, so stick to the end of the video to hear the entire story. Now, there's been a lot of talk and concern about the CBDCs lately in the United States and also internationally. The Federal Reserve has its FedNow CBDC and the Central Bank Digital Currency, which is also its international version. I want to hear your thoughts on this entire CBDC debate, so please don't hesitate to leave a comment down below and make sure you hit that like button for me so we could share this important message to other people. Now, if you don't already know, a CDBC is a central bank digital currency, and it's a virtual currency that is issued and backed by the central bank, in this case, the Federal Reserve. And it's important to note that the CDBCs are not the same as stable coins like USDT or USDC. Now, those are cryptocurrencies issued by private enterprises and are pegged to something else. Now, unlike Bitcoin, which is decentralized, a CDBC is as centralized as it can get and being backed by this full faith and credit of the United States government. So the question is, why would the US government and the Federal Reserve want to create a CDBC? For you and for me. There are many reasons. And let's start with the fact that the US does not want to fall behind. There's 87 countries out there interested in CDBCs and 65 of them are already well into developing their own. Out of those, 20 central banks have even launched pilot programs. China is one of those countries and they showcased their CDBC during the 2022 Olympic Games in Beijing. Athletes and visitors were using it to make purchases in the new Olympic Village. Now China has expanded its pilot program to 25 cities where public sector workers like government employees and schools, hospitals, and media are being paid in CBDC. In these cities, CBDC can be used to pay for utilities, transportation, tuition, taxes, and more. China is really ahead in this area, focusing on experimentation and learning for now rather than full-scale adoption. They are leading the world with this largest CDBC pilot program. They got more than 260 million wallets out there, which is tremendous. Now, here's the thing. China is leading the way in this area. They are making great progress with their own digital currency known as CDBC. And this is not just China. Around 20 countries are already in the pilot phase of their own program. They're exploring this as a whole concept. And then we have the United States. We're going through a phase of FOMO right now. We started looking into CDBCs a few years ago and we're currently in the research stage. But you know what? It's not surprising at all that we're the United States after all. Our dollar is the world's reserve currency. So naturally, we have to take a serious look at this. Now, it's a decision that our federal government and the Federal Reserve need to make together. They have to figure out if having a CDBC will help maintain the dollar status as the world's reserve currency. But here's the catch. The Federal Reserve said that they will only issue a CDBC if Congress and the executive branch support it. And we all know the Fed is not actually a part of the government. It's a private organization. Now, aside from FOMO and the risk of being left behind, consider the other reasons why the federal government and the Federal Reserve would like to implement a CDBC. From their point of view, they believe a CDBC would make payments faster and cheaper. But there's more to it than just that. One thing they're excited about is having programmable money. It might sound handy at first, but think about it. If they don't like you, or any institution or even a whole country is it's up to, they can easily freeze your money. Just like that poof with a switch, no access. And you know, they say all about transparency in money flow. In other words, they'll have their eyes on every little thing you do with your money. They'll know what you're buying, where you're spending, and maybe even why. It's like someone's peeking over your shoulder all the time. Now, people say that CDBCs could be beneficial for those who don't have a bank account, the unbanked population in the United States. Now, these advantages are what they claim, but we have to approach it from our perspective. We need to consider whether these advantages really apply to us and other people we know. Remember, there are potential benefits as well, but let's focus on the primary ones that are often talked about. Now, one of the main arguments is that a CDBC would help up unbanked population in the United States. It's true that there are people right now in our country who don't have a bank account. However, let's look at the bigger picture. Globally, there are around 2 billion people without bank accounts. Surprisingly, about 80% of them actually have smartphones. 
So the idea that they don't have any access to a bank account, but have smartphones, we can connect them to CDBC and the central bank digital currency. And doing so will improve their lives and make the world a better place. So they say. And it sounds pretty noble, but personally, I don't believe it and I don't think it's complete. Here's the thing. That story may work for some places, like Mongolia or somewhere else, like a third world country. But here in the good US of A, it's a different story altogether. And the argument goes that CDBCs will benefit the 4% of people in the United States who don't have bank accounts. They say it'll help them out but here's the kicker survey shows that 40 percent of these folks don't even want a bank account which is crazy but they choose not to have one because they don't trust the banks hello and let me tell you trust is a big deal when it comes to money imagine the fed just switching off your money and at the end of the day we're human so it's all about control now think about it if these same people don't trust the banks do you really think they're gonna be all warm and fuzzy about this new digital currency from a central bank i mean come on really it's highly unlikely so in my humble opinion this argument is a bit off it doesn't quite add up look i'm all for progress and finding ways to make things better but we need to be realistic and consider the actual needs and concerns of the people for their independence and privacy simply imposing a new system won't magically solve the problem we need to address the underlying issues and build trust in the financial system before we start talking about a fancy digital currency and as of now we have multiple states that have banned cdbc's and if you like this video check out this next video about texas